Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is the uh, last lecture for third year uh, pharmacy students, pharmacognosy. Uh, I am Dr. Abdul Rahim Ibrahim. In this lecture, we'll continue to talk about uh, the major metabolic pathway, the mevalumate pathway, the, th the third major uh, pathway, the mevalumate pathway. Uh, the compounds in, the, in this pathway are formed from uh, building blocks of isoprene, isoprene units, dimethyl allyl pyrophosphate and isobentinyl pyrophosphate. And isobentinyl pyrophosphate, which are formed from mevalonic acid, which are formed from Mevalonic acid. Mevalonic acid itself is formed from acetyl CoA also, from acetyl CoA. Uh, Monoterbenes are formed from two isoprene units. Cisco terbenes are formed from three isoprene by addition of isobentinyl pyrophosphate to the monoterbenes. Uh, also, diterbenes are formed from cisco terbenes by addition of one more isoprene. Uh, sister terbenes are 25, C25 compounds formed by an addition of an uh, uh, isoprene unit, isobentinyl pyrophosphate, and they have a skeletal of 25 carbons. Triterbenes are formed from two cisco terbene uh, molecules, two cisco terbene molecules. However, carotenoids, which are tetraterbenoids or C40 compounds, are derived from two diterbene uh, units. Two diterbene units. Uh, these are examples for some acyclic, monotur uh, acyclic terbinoids, and these are examples for cyclic terbines. Example for uh, acyclic uh, monoterbines is geraniol. Geraniol is formed from two isoprenes, as you can see. So 10 carbons and two isoprenes attached by head to tail attachment. Head to tail attachment. It is the precursor of all other monoterbines. Farnesol consists of 15 carbons and derived from three isoprenes, also uh, uh, formed of uh, uh, units which are head to tail attached. Head to tail attached. Geranyl geraniol, uh, formed of four isoprene units, and also the units here are uh, head to tail attached, and geranyl geraniol as the precursor of all the iterbenes. Also, Farnesol is the precursor of all Cisco terbenes. In addition to these acyclic monoterbenes, we have cyclic monoterbenes. For example, menthol, as you can see, is formed from two isoprenes. Uh, Bisaboline, for example, from three isoprenes. And the taxodiene is formed from four isoprenes. Menthol, is a cyclic monoterbene, misabolene is a cyclic cisco terbene, and taxodiene is a cyclic diterbene. The reactions involved in the formation of isoprene units are, are outlined in this uh, mechanism. Initially, two acetyl CoA molecules react by a Claisian type reaction to form acetoacetyl CoA. This uh, acetoacetyl CoA reacts with enzyme bound acetate. The third molecule of enzyme bound acetate uh, reacts with acetoacetyl CoA and forms a beta hydroxymethyl molotryl CoA. This is not linear addition of acetyl CoA. Uh, at the same time that the acetate reacts with the uh, acetoacetyl CoA, it, it is hydrolyzed from the enzyme cells. This is from the enzyme cells. Uh, HMG CoA or hydroxymethyl or trial CoA is reduced 
pyridactase enzyme into mevaldic acid hemithioacetal, uh, which is rearranged into uh, mevaldic acid. Mevaldic acid is further reduced into mevalonic acid. This has a compound, mevalonic acid, has no metabolic feature except the formation of terpenoids. It is phosphorylated first by two uh, adenosine triphosphate molecules to form a uh, mevalonate pyrophosphate, subsequently decarboxylated with the intermediacy of another or the third molecule of ATP to form isobentinyl pyrophosphate, which is one of the isobrenins. Isobentinyl pyrophosphate undergoes allylic isomerization, specific allylic isomerization to form dimethyl allyl pyrophosphate. These are the building blocks of uh, terminal molecules. They may be formed also by another pathway called methyl acetyl pathway. However, this is beyond the scope of this lecture. This is the mechanism by which monterbine geraniol is derived from isobentinyl pyrophosphate and dimethyl allyl pyrophosphate. The first step is the formation of an resonance stabilized uh, cation which reacts with the uh, uh, isobentinyl pyrophosphate by uh, electrophilic addition to form a tertiary carbocation. This tertiary carbocation loses the proton and forms geraniol. Geraniol, as I said before, is the precursor of all monoterbenes. Uh, some changes which happen in the biosynthesis of terpenoids generally and cisco terpenes particularly include the use of non classical cations, first, the use of non classical cations, molecular rearrangement, or so called uh, Wagner mineral rearrangement, methyl and hydryl group shifts, as well as anti Markovnikov addition. We try to give or pinpoint the uh, involvement of these. Uh, steps and the biosense of terpenes in the following examples. This is an example for uh, the biosense of some bionines. Bionine. Bionine is a cyclic monoterpene. Uh, Mentonyl alpha terpenyl cation is formed from geraniol. This is an example of non classical cation. The action of the double bond of this cation to quench the charge on this carbon produces what's called a pinyl cation. Pinyl cation. This pinyl cation can lose proton from either uh, positions, uh, either from uh, the methyl group or from this carbon to form uh, beta binine or alpha binine. Uh, therefore, we have involvement of uh, non-classical cation. We have charge quenching by proton loss. Uh, the formation of cisco terpenes generally proceeds via uh, a reaction of geranyl geranyl pyrophosphate with an additional isoprene. In this case, electrophilic addition also with this resonance stabilized cation formed from geraniol geraniol pyrophosphate produces a tertiary cation. Tertiary cation undergoes the specific loss of a proton, a pro R proton, to form farnesyl pyrophosphate. Farnesyl pyrophosphate, as I said before, is the precursor of all cisquiterbene and plants. Example for the cisco terpenes, the formation of the cyclic hydrocarbon bisabolene. Uh, this cation arises from uh, farnesyl pyrophosphate, farnesyl or cis farnesyl pyrophosphate actually, uh, charge quenching by the double bond uh, electrons here produces 
بس بولايل كتاين بس بولايل كتاين charge is quenched by protons from the zero locations to form beta bisabolene if proton loss from this methyl group. If proton loss from this position, from this position, we have gamma bisabolene. If the proton loss was from this carbon, then we get uh, alpha bisabolene. These are isomers for our bisabolines. Uh, uh, charge quenching may take place also by reaction of water, in which case hydroxyl group uh, quenches the charge of this carbon. This is an illustration or a symbol uh, illustration of how uh, different cisco terbenes are formed. The last category of the biosynthetic pathways is the uh, biosynthesis of the alkaloids. The biosynthesis of alkyl alkaloids. Alkaloids are a unique class of natural products characterized by uh, uh, presence of nitrogen in their skeleton. It has a special group of reactions, including uh, shift base formation, the very general action in the biosynthesis of alkaloids is shift base uh, formation, shift base formation, in which case an amino group reacts from generally from an amino acid, reacts with the carbonyl group to form a carbinolamine. Carbinolamine loses water and forms uh, the shift base. This water and produces a shift base, a mean or shift base. Uh, this shift base uh, also may be quaternary shift base if we start with uh, secondary amine. If we start with secondary amine, we obtain at last a quaternary shift base. The second general reaction for uh, alkaloid biosynthesis is the Manich type reaction. Manich type reaction is one way for carbon carbon bond making. One reaction in which uh, there is making of a carbon carbon bond. Uh, one previous reaction we also talked about uh, in the, for the formation of carbon carbon bond is the aldolase reaction. Manich reaction occurs when a shift base is attacked or reacts with uh, an electron nature carbon. This way, a carbon-carbon bond is made. It's a very important reaction in alkaloid uh, biosynthesis. Uh, this is an example for, this is an example of uh, the involvement of Manich reaction and the biosynthesis of some simple isoquinone alkaloids. Phenylethylamine, derived from phenylalanine by the carboxylation, reacts with pyruvate. Uh, the product is a shift base. Is a shift base. This shift base reacts with this carbon, which is electron rich, being para to a methoxyl group, and carbon carbon bond is made, and the skeleton here becomes uh, is uh, a skeleton. And this way, we obtain some of these simple isoquinone alkaloids, including uh, anhalamine, anhalamine, anhalandine, and anhalamine. And the difference between these compounds is the uh, aldehyde or carbonyl compound, which reacts with the uh, phenylethylamine base. In this case, we have pyruvic acid. In this case, we have glyoxylic acid. A difference may exist on some of these uh, closely related compounds, for example, anhalonine and anhalonine. Anhalonine has, uh, anhalamine, anhalonine has additional methyl group in this position. This uh, uh, describes the involvement of Manich reaction uh, 
in the biosense because because in this step we have a shift base. This shift base is attacked by an electron rich carb to produce a simple isoquinone uh, alkyl. Some more reactions involved in the biosense of alkalis include uh, dehydration, aldol condensation, uh, nucleophilic and electrophilic substitution, and rearrangement. All this reaction you probably know about. Uh, but however, uh, one of the unique reactions is the rearrangement. Sometimes a rearrangement is involved. For example, in the rearrangement of l alanine into Minastropic acid, in which case the carboxylic acid group of phenylalanine replaces a two pro S broad, and we get uh, tropic acid. Uh, tropic acid is obtained from uh, initially formed compound by transamination to aldehyde and reduction of the aldehyde into primary alcohol. Tropic acid is involved in the formation of tropane alkaloids. Examples for the biosynthesis of some alkaloids is from uh, ornithine. Ornithine is a basic amino acid. For example, in tobacco uh, leaves, ornithine is a basic amino acid because it contains two amino groups. Is formed from an acidic amino acid, l glutamic acid. l glutamic acid by reduction to uh, aldehyde and the transamination, uh, ornithine is obtained. Ornithine uh, is decarboxylated into butyrosine by amino butane, uh, which is methylated in presence of S adenosine methionine into uh, N methyl butyrosine, which is oxidized or this. Primary amine is oxidized to aldehyde to form formethyl amino butanol, in which case a ship base is formed between this amino group and the carbonyl to form uh, N methyl delta 1 pyrolinium cation. Uh, this pyrolinium cation reacts with. Uh, reduce uh, three sex dihydronicotinic acid reacts with three sex dihydronic acid. We have nicotinic acid reduced in presence of NADH to produce uh, three sex dihydronicotinic acid, which is the carboxylated on one two dihydroperidine. One two dihydroperidine reacts with uh, N methyl cation, which is formed from uh, ornithine to form this intermediate. Intermediate is oxidized into nicotine, in which case this nicotine is hydroxylated into a hydroxymethyl derivative in presence of monoxygenase enzyme, and then a formaldehyde is lost to form nor nicotine. This is consistent with the experiment we described in the formation of uh, nicotinic alcohols before. Uh, in which case we, we uh, the chronological order of formation of the alkaloids uh, was uh, nicotine is produced first and undergoes uh, reduction uh, demethylation into nor nicotine based on uh, uh, the uh, accumulation of radioactivity after feeding labeled nicotinic acid. Anabazine is an acid, another also uh, uh, nicotian alkaloid. Uh, it is a higher homologue of uh, nicotine. Uh, in this case, lysine, am lysine amino acid, also a basic amino acid, uh, and the higher homologue of ornithine is decarboxylated into cadaverine. Cadaverine undergoes oxidation into 5-amino bentanal, 5-amino bentanal produces a ship base which is called uh, delta-1-piperdiene. 
This is uh, analogous to the formation of enemy soil barium cation from ornithine. The same uh, concept, the same reaction involved. Uh, the second step, reaction of 1,2-dihydropyridine, which is formed from nicotinic acid or production of reduction and decarboxylation of nicotinic acid, reaction of 1,2-dihydropyridine uh, with the uh, delta 1 pyridinum cation. With the, in this case, we have aldol al al time reaction or reaction of enamine with amine to form. Uh, uh, anabazine. Uh, this describes the information required from the student or the simple information required a student should uh, uh, know uh, and the biosciences of natural problems. Uh, I'll give also additional uh, notes about the protocol for solving uh, organic spectral problems of natural products, some uh, guidelines in solving uh, problems, and this is important for uh, students regarding the part of uh, spectroscopy. First of all, to conduct spectral data or to obtain spectral data uh, of any organic compound we should have pure compound which pure compound can be should be prepared by use of uh, chromatography use of chromatography and we said that before after that we measure uh, physical constants for uh, the isolated compound melting mine, optical rotation, and then we make refractive index in case of liquids. Uh, after uh, the second step, a data collection. We have to uh, derive the empirical formula and then exact formula. Empirical formula can be calculated from uh, uh, elemental analysis as we explained before and then exact formula obtained by knowing the molecular weight of the compound uh, based on mass spec. However, sometimes uh, there is a problem in knowing the uh, mass spec of the compound, of the molecular weight of the compound. In this case, probably we cannot know the exact formula or the molecular formula of the compound. If we knew the exact formula, we can uh, drive the unsaturation number of rings or double bonds in uh, our natural polar. Uh, this is example of a mass for a mass spectrum which shows uh, the location of the uh, molecular ion. For example, here for this example we talked about before uh, driving the uh, empirical formula by elemental analysis. Uh, this is the molecular ion peak, which has the largest M -L -Z or M -L -E value, 115. This is the M plus peak. M plus peak. These are fragments from uh, the M plus. For example, uh, 100 by loss of methyl group from 115 and so on. There are mechanisms which explain the, all these prominent fragment ions in the mass spec. So, if we, uh, if we obtain the exact nuclear weight and we have the uh, <coughs> empirical formula, we can drive or obtain the molecular formula. After knowing or driving the exact formula, we can drive the unsaturation, the number of rings or double bonds. Using this equation, the number of tetravalent atoms, carbon, minus half the number of monovalent, the hydrogens, 
plus half the number of trivalent nitrogen plus one uh, gives the unsaturation, which uh, uh, denotes the number of uh, rings or double bonds. It's very important, actually. Uh, the molecular formula can be obtained uh, from by another way, which is the uh, use of high resolution mass spec and comparison of the observed exact formula with pinon tables. Our formula should be the one which is not different from our uh, observed for, uh, uh, formula by 0.003 atomic mass units. Uh, this is because all uh, exact mass of atoms are not, as I said before, uh, integers. They, there are decimals, except in case of carbon. Therefore, uh, the exact molecular weight should has I should have a decimal, should have a decimal. Uh, for example, if I have a gas and I uh, made high resolution mass spec of that gas and obtained the exact mass, observed the exact mass, 28.0062. Uh, this value probably can match the molecular weight of either carbon monoxide or, or, uh, or, uh, or nitrogen. Um, I can calculate the exact mass of uh, carbon monoxide. It is 27.99491, whereas that of nitrogen 28.00614. And my gas then is nitrogen because the difference in the exact mass of my uh, analyze the sample and that of nitrogen is less than 0.03 atomic mass units. Whereas if I subtract uh, the exact mass of my compound from the exact mass of, uh, of uh, carbon oxide, the difference is more than 0.03 atomic mass units. Therefore, the sample of this gas uh, or the, those, those gas, we can conclude that that gas is uh, nitrogen gas. UV spectra can be helpful in uh, predicting the presence of certain chromophores in our compound. Uh, and we gave before the Woodward Heiser rules for enones and for vines. You probably have to make revision on these tools. This can be helpful to prove the presence of certain chromophores. Also, uh, other uh, chromophores can be uh, examined by presence of maxima at certain wavelengths. For example, uh, in case of a trans double bond, it has a UV maxima at 180 uh, nanometer. The cis double bond has maxima at 183. Uh, these are disubstituted acyclic olefins. Cyclic olefins, which are tetrasubstituted, uh, has a maxima. Acyclic olefins, which are tetrasubstituted, has a maxima at 200 uh, nanometers. And cyclic compounds, cyclic olefins that substituted, maxima is 193 nanometer. Tetra substituted uh, uh, cyclic olefins uh, have uh, maxima at 206 nanometer. Carbonyl compounds also show. UV lambda max, for example, in case of acetone at 270 nanometers. However, upon increase of the size of the alkyl groups, there is increment on, in, uh, in the uh, wavelengths of maximum absorption. Wavelengths of maximum absorption going from acetone to methyl tertiary butyl ketone to di tertiary butyl ketone, there is increase when in, in uh, lambda max. Uh, 
Uh, UV spectroscopy can also be helpful in location of hydroxyl groups on flavonoid nucleus. For example, in case of, and I gave uh, some hints before about that uh, topic. Uh, in case of compounds such as uh, rutin, uh, the presence of four prime methyl hydroxyl group is concluded if we add sodium hydroxide or sodium oxide, and I find large basochromic shift in band one. Band one, the wavelength band, uh, there is a large basochromic shift, about 20, uh, or 52 nanometer shift. This indicates that uh, the flavonoid has a four prime hydroxyl group. Aluminum chloride shift in band one also indicates the presence of a five hydroxyl group. Sodium acetate shift also is uh, indicative or uh, significant uh, in uh, proving the presence of seven, seven uh, free hydroxyl group, seven. This uh, three, then we find shift in band two, band two, about 12 nanometer shift in band two. Uh, addition of sodium acetate, that's boric acid, the last shift indicates the presence of ortho hydroxyl And this is present in my compound uh, because, as you can see, uh, we, have, uh, we have three prime, four prime by hydroxy group three. Uh, or ortho dihydroxysis. This ortho dihydroxysis, as this before, can also be uh, uh, examined by uh, addition of HCl to aluminum chloride and this, uh, the, uh, uh, trace a decrease in the maxima, uh, the, the, the location of band one, the location of band one. Also, uh, we proceed further after this uh, brief reduction into uh, uh, examining the presence of functional groups. This can be uh, obtained by analysis of IR spectra, which group frequency region indicate the presence, for example, of hydroxyl, uh, amino, carbonyl. This show uh, intense peaks in the group frequency region. Carbocetin MR also can uh, give inf information about the number of carbon atoms in the molecule and also the multiplicity of these carbons, the type of the carbons uh, present, proton methyl or methylene or methyl or quaternary carbon. Uh, also, if the number of carbon atoms in spectrum less than the number, the carbon in the formula, then there is symmetry in the molecule. Proton MR is very valuable also. Uh, integration uh, gives the information about the number of protons at each resonance. The coupling information, uh, scalar coupling, indica indicates which protons uh, couple to each other. Exchange of protons like OH or, S or SH or NH protons uh, or carboxylic acid protons can be detected by exchangeable uh, proton tests after addition of the ethereum oxide. NOE shift also, NOE experiment give information about the dipolar coupling. So we have two types of coupling, scalar coupling, scalar coupling and dipolar coupling, uh, coupling as we uh, explained before. Uh, we can then deduce the structure formula. Further support for our conclusion comes by explaining the mass fragmentation pattern of the compound. Uh, this is a brief list, checklist for logical and uh, pedagogical uh, completeness, not necessarily in order, and yeah, not. Uh, exactly, steps should be followed. Uh, you can use these steps not necessarily in order. Uh, first step should do is the 
uh, molecular formula index of hydrogen deficiency after uh, obtaining the molecular formula. You can assign the bands in the IR region, assign the protons and proton MR, uh, assign all the carbons and the multiplicity of the carbons using the depth, uh, calculate the uh, difference in coupling constant, uh, or the, the, the resolution of bands by dividing the uh, uh, difference in frequency over uh, the coupling constant. Uh, and multiplicity, in case of proton and MAR also should be uh, deciphered. Uh, probably we did not study 2D in MAR in this course, so you cannot perform this step. Uh, AI spectra also, AI my spec uh, supports the structure you obtain. Also, after uh, conclusions are made, there's possibility that isomers can be printed. This is a brief list for the steps that we follow in uh, obtaining or uh, structural sedation of our compound. This is the last uh, uh, lecture in the, this part, and there will be uh, uh, some uh, convenient questions uh, on this uh, every lecture of this part. Thank you.